Ah, welcome back, my grumpy friends. I see you've decided to grace us with your presence yet again. Today, because I clearly have nothing better to do, I'm going to enlighten you about something you've inevitably stumbled into with your expert level internet skills. And that, my friends, is fishing. No geniuses, I'm not talking about wasting a perfectly good afternoon getting sunburned on a rickety boat with a warm six pack by your side and getting eaten alive by mosquitoes saying, it don't get any better than this. Although if that's your idea of fun, you really might want to reconsider some of your life choices. But for the rest of us unfortunate souls who have had a run in with the digital version of fishing, hang tight. This might be the most valuable thing you watch today. Welcome to the Grumpy Sysadmins episode on fishing. The universe's way of reminding you that your spam filter isn't perfect. So here comes the million dollar question. What is fishing? Well, because apparently some of you folks are still living under a rock and haven't gotten the memo. Fishing is a brilliant little scheme where lowlifes try to con you by sending laughably deceptive emails, cringeworthy instant messages, or crafting fake web pages that very much look like the real thing. The end game? Well, to hoodwink you out of handing over your credentials or personal details. Why? Well, so they can joyride through your accounts and swipe your credit card and personal information for their oh-so-noble endeavors. Give yourselves a pat on the back if you already knew this. But for the rest of you, try to keep up. Yes, I know. What a revelation, right? Here's a news flash for you. The digital world isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Your best defense against these pathetic con artists? Not living in a fantasy land. Assume everything on the internet is out to get you because guess what? It probably is. Don't trust anything you stumble upon, whether you see it, read it, hear it, or heaven forbid, even receive it. Unless, of course, you have absolute irrefutable proof of its origin. And I mean 100% confirmation, not your wishy-washy gut feelings. That's right, welcome to the real world. Now here's an example of a real mailbox. How do I know it's a real mailbox? Well, it's because it's my mailbox. That's right, it's just some of the trash that my own mailbox discards. Take a close look. You can see how many of these messages look like they're actually real. They have official looking names, scary titles, all things to try and bait you into opening them and look at them. But don't be fooled. If in this case you don't use Norton Antivirus, or your cell phone isn't on T-Mobile's network, or even if you have an Android phone and not an iPhone, you can see how all of these messages are simply trying to dupe you. Now, taking a closer look at one of these, here's the fake T-Mobile message. Looks pretty convincing, right? Well, here are some glaring clues that this message isn't actually from T-Mobile. Take a look at that sender address. S6GI blah 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 at L O L something dot UK something dot com. Now that sounds pretty legit T Mobile, right? Wrong. They didn't even try to hide the fact that this message didn't come from T Mobile. Also, if you hover your mouse over that big pink button, the address that it's going to go to is some strange storage address somewhere that's anywhere but T Mobile. That's legitimate, right? So prepare for some enlightenment. Here's a shocking rundown of some of Fishing 101 for those of you who've been blissfully unaware. Email phishing. Ah, the scammer's favorite playground. This tactic is as old as the hills, yet people fall for it hook, line, and sinker. Why? Because many folks apparently believe that their email is a magical realm full of trustworthiness barely giving a second glance to what lands in their inbox. Well, these genius scammers, they whip up faux messages that masquerade as legitimate accounts or services that everyone's familiar with. And the cherry on top, they desperately hope you'll click their shady button or link. Watch out for their greatest hits like pretend bank accounts, bogus insurance claim notifications, counterfeit delivery updates, 
and the oh-so-real-looking Amazon messages. Bravo, tricksters. Bravo. You deserve an Emmy. Next up, we have spear phishing. Here's a fun twist on the classic email scam. Instead of blasting their trash to the masses, these brainiacs decide to get personal. How touching, right? Rather than carpet bombing every Tom, Dick, and Harry with their trash, they've chosen to specifically target you. Often because you've generously advertised your role in a company or organization for the world, and them, of course, to see. Consider it a more, shall we say, intimate deception. Next in the queue we have is vishing. Oh, let's give a standing ovation for this brilliant evolution of phishing. Now they're infiltrating your voicemail. That's right, you get a super urgent and totally legitimate sounding message playing on your fears of banking mishaps, shipping disasters, or some other world ending calamity. Sometimes they'll even tug on your heartstrings pretending to be that grandchild you have forgotten or a college buddy you just can't quite recall. Toga! Toga! But here's the piece de resistance. The classic, can you buy gift cards for Mr. Big Important Executive and send the codes our way? Scam. Innovative? Hardly. Desperate and laughable? Absolutely. And our next example, smishing. Ever heard of it? Well, that's that delightful world of phishing via SMS because, you know, ruining your email experience just wasn't satisfaction enough for these pests. They hurled their nonsense into random text messages, fingers crossed that some unsuspecting soul will bite. And once someone does, oh, that's when the fun begins as they tap dance all over that poor person's gullibility. These and more are just a few types of the delightful attacks we often encounter in our oh-so-exciting daily lives. All right, everyone, pay attention, because clearly some remedial instruction is needed here. Rule numero uno of surviving the digital age, keep those trigger-happy fingers in check. Now, I get it. Shiny buttons beckon you to click on them. And those forms, they'll, they lure you in simply begging to be filled out and submitted and yada, 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 yada. But here's a wild thought. Don't fall for it. I know. Groundbreaking advice, isn't it? Now, every single urgent request you get via email or whatever channel it comes from should be met with a hefty dose of skepticism. Oh, your bank says your account is about to be locked or vanish into the abyss? Well, before you leap into their devious digital net, here's a novel idea. Call them, you know, like on an actual phone. Or if you're feeling especially spry, why not waltz into an actual brick and mortar bank and have a chat in person? I'm willing to bet you my last cookie that you were just the gullible guppy the scammer had hoped to catch. Remember, always verify through trusted means and not the shady message that initiated the whole charade. Keep your wits about you and let's try not to make it too easy for the scammers, okay? So you want to know what really makes me grumpy or absolutely infuriates me about phishing scams? It's not even the sheer mind-boggling lack of basic human instinct to pause and think. People can't be bothered to squint their eyes for two seconds to read a message thoroughly or muster an ounce of healthy suspicion when faced with offers that are so obviously delusions of grandeur. Some folks, I swear, have the discerning capacity of a bag of rocks. We're talking common sense that's apparently as abundant as gold in a trash heap. And oh, the drama doesn't end there. Even when the signs are brighter than neon in Vegas, what do these eager beavers do? They click on those links like they're racing to save the world. Or they call back those numbers as if the lottery commissioner himself had personally dialed them. Or they go and buy gift cards with the devotion of a saint and then, and here's the piece de resistance, 
they hurl those precious numbers at the scammers like rose petals at a royal wedding, probably with a handwritten thank you note attached. It's a tragic parade of naivete like lemmings throwing a farewell party as they leap into the abyss. I mean, really, could we try to make it a little harder for the scammers? Or shall we keep rolling out the red carpet for them too? Bravo, humanity. Bravo. So after all we've talked about, all the obvious signs and red flags, we have a novel concept. Even a battalion of the world's most patient help desk technicians, armed with all the wisdom of the digital age, can't save you if you're operating with less sense than God granted a breadcrumb. You know what? Read the blasted message. Develop an allergy to anything that even whiffs of sketchiness. Ever wonder why much of the tech realm is wrapping itself in a zero-trust security blanket like it's the end of days? Well, let me spell it out for you. It's because they've cottoned on to the painful truth that the real hazard, the glaring, flashing, siren-wailing weak link, is the good old human being. That's right. You. Now, don't be the tech world's equivalent of a screen door on a submarine. Newsflash. You haven't won squat. You're not the long-lost heir to the throne of Nowheresville, and you certainly haven't struck gold with some mysterious inheritance, miraculous tax return, or fantasy insurance claim that just landed like a unicorn in your inbox. Get a grip. In a world chock full of deception and digital pitfalls, a spoonful of skepticism is your only prescription. So for the love of sanity, swallow it. And there we have it, folks. The bitter dregs of another thrilling episode of The Grumpy Sysadmin, where today we journeyed into the dark yet shockingly simple underworld of fishing. Oh, the joys of explaining yet again how not to hand over your life savings to a prince from a country that doesn't even exist on a map. So, did we learn anything today? Did we manage to grasp the profound concept that, no, you haven't magically won the lottery of a country that you can't spell, and no, your bank does not ask for your password via email like some casual chat between old pals? I certainly hope this monumental wisdom doesn't burden that brain of yours too heavily. But <laughs> who am I kidding? I'm sure half of you are out there right now ready to wire your entire life savings to save a damsel in distress who just so happens to have the same grammar skills as your pet hamster. And the other half of you? Well, you're probably drafting thank you notes to go along with the gift cards you're sending to those IRS agents who threatened you conveniently over your voicemail. Bravo. But before I go, if by some divine intervention you found this rent, I mean tutorial helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to hear more of me screaming into the void about the absolute basics of internet survival, or don't. It's not like I'm sitting here just refreshing the page waiting for your digital applause. Until next time, when we will yet again try to arm you with the simplest tools to not fall face first into the most obvious traps on the worldwide wonderland. Here's a wild idea. Be suspicious. Be skeptical. As a matter of fact, be anything but the gullible click-happy disaster you were today. This is the Grumpy Sissonman signing off. And for the love of bandwidth, think twice before you click.